What's up, everybody? Welcome in to the Fantasy Football Game Show brought to you by Front Yard Fantasy here on Better Sports Network. I'm your host, Simon, joined as always by my co-host, Joey Wright. What's up, Joey? The peanuts were in the mail. I'm here, everybody. And Joe's <laughs> peanuts got delayed, so he decided not to join us until his payment came in. But joining us today, we have a very special guest and great friend. Michael, Michael Stoyanov is here with us. For those of you that do not know Michael, you can find him on Twitter at Mike Stoyanov. It's his last name right there below the screen, and you know how to spell Mike. He's an actor, writer, and as his Twitter will let you know, a sandwich enjoyer. We were talking about it right before the show. Mm -hmm. You may know him from the 90s sitcom Blossom and also his roles in Billions, Dark Knight, Justified, and Blacklist. Mike, thank you so much for taking the time to come on here today with us. Thank you so much. You hit all my favorite credits, too, so I appreciate that. Also, <laughs> uh, I did an episode of The Rookie this season with Nathan Fillion. Uh, check oh, that out. wow. Like, That's he's awesome. great. He's fun. He's a great actor, so that was... Uh, Top of the list for now. How was that uh, working with him? Did you enjoy that? Uh, technically, I did not actually work with him. It's a bit of an ensemble <laughs> show, and uh, my scenes were with uh, these the two other cops. Uh, but it was a it was a real good time. That's awesome. That's awesome. Definitely go and check that out, everybody. We got some people in the chat ready for today's show. Craig here, excited for the guests. As billions of shows in, and FIF has finally blossomed into a show with a bunch of clowns on it today, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. That was that good. Well we got done. Albert in the chat as well. What's up, What's Albert? Up, Albert? Dave down here. What's up, Dave? Dave? Love you too, my friend. And we got Pang's picks in here. What's up, Pang? We got Dame in the chat. Welcome to us in on this Wednesday is the day of the week today. What's up, Dame? And Victor in the chat with our happy hump day, bro. Chacho, smash that like button. Every time Victor comes in here, which I'm so appreciative, every day he's been in the chat. When he says bro, Chachos, I read it as brontosaurus, and I don't know why. Every day I've done that. It's like that thing where they yeah. just, if the first couple letters and the last letters, and then you fill in the rest in between. Mm -hmm. I feel like I saw some like email chain meme thing with like that in a long time. It's like, have you seen those where it's a whole email thing? Like the human brain doesn't need the letters to be in the right order. And then at the end, it's like, in fact, look back at this paragraph. The words have been wrong the whole time. And they try to like pull one over on you. That's what's going on, Joey. Ready for the human brain. We're going to put it to the test today, I, I hope. <laughs> We'll see. We got Front Yard Fantasy in the chat. Don't know who's hey. on that account, but what's up? Welcome in. We've been hacked. And Dave in the chat with the elite guest. Uh, we also got Jade on here with the butt ups, giving some credit to uh, mm -hmm. to Craig up in there. And before that was we get solid into it, play as far as I'm concerned. And again, he highlighted a lot of my favorite my favorite jobs. So I well see done, you. Craig. I see you, Craig. <laughs> He stepped up his game. Yesterday's joke was a little lackluster. The uh, the pun at today's show made up for it, Craig. You nailed it. Definitely. We got Scott fishing here with the, there are a few things I'm great at, but well, responding to text quickly is right definitely here. my best trait. Well, that's a sick Scott Fishbowl shirt. Which one is that from? Is that a that's new one? Chicago. I played in the Gotham division, but I had to get the Chicago too because I just, you know, I'm a Bears guy. So there you go. Checks out. It usually equates to misery, but when I saw this shirt, I was like, hey, happy days. <laughs> hey, and we Justin Fields is your quarterback the now. The of the Chicago logo, and it reps the SFB, so boom. Happy I don't day. know who Scott's referring to here, but I will say, as a whole, that is a weakness of the Front Yard Fantasy team, is responding in a timely manner to text messages. I think Joey, probably top tier. I'd put him at uh, echelon one. Of responding and then Jay and then me and JL probably a solid four or five tiers below that. It's not good, Bob. <laughs> Do you want good. me to be honest on the show or should I you be guys are day three come back tomorrow? <laughs> seventh round for your text ability. Exactly. I'm I'm borderline Mr. Irrelevant in that one. Also, Victor in the chat saying he's Team Michael because he's a Bears fan. Hashtag to Bears. So you got some Bears support in the chat oh, already. Right. Let's get it done. 
And guys, we brought Michael here team. today to play some fantasy Jeopardy with us. Last time he came on, he dominated at pole perception, took home the W. He's trying to keep that win streak going today. Before we get into that, though, a couple reminders. First and foremost, if you're not already following our guest, Michael, over on Twitter, go and fix that right now. He's on Twitter at Mike Stoyanov. There you can find uh, updates on what he's been working on, shows that he's appearing on, and anything else that you're looking for. Picture of his handsome face, first and foremost. So I don't know uh, what else you need to go click that follow button. Nice. I appreciate that. And then after... uh, after It's on my face uh, when I dally in politics, but no one says uh, handsome (laughs) face. (laughs) <laughs> hey, I didn't uh, I didn't mind reading through your recent uh, political Thank takedowns on there, Mike. I appreciate the shout out for sure. <laughs> I uh, I enjoy that aspect of your Twitter and I have a feeling a lot of people listening might enjoy that I part only of do, it as well. I don't post like OP post because I don't I do reply a lot and I'm like, well, that way it keeps it separate ish. I probably need two separate accounts, truth be told, because I don't want to offend anyone. Uh, but these are charged and emotional times. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So it's a, it's a, I try and walk the tightrope and apologies <laughs> if I have or will in the future offend anyone listening now. You've got your, your normal account and then you have Mike Stoyanov parentheses offensive that you reply to other people. <laughs> I, I feel I like a- Michael should be the political take, like be really serious with Michael. And then Mike is the fun stuff. Uh, that <laughs> is not, that is not even a joke. Like casual Mike is casual and he's here for fantasy. And then Michael is a little more serious and you know, he's tussling. On the politics side, but let's not even let's yeah. not go there. Let's not even let's keep them separate, even even right now. <laughs> well, I was gonna say our special politics edition of Fantasy yes. Jeopardy. I'm just kidding. No, no. Today we brought Mike here to play Fantasy Football Jeopardy. It is a lot like the popular TV show Jeopardy, but with a fantasy or NFL twist. Most of these questions are going to be about the NFL or fantasy football. Whenever it's your turn. You're going to pick a category that you want from this board and a question value. Get that question right. You are going to add that money to your score. Get it wrong. Nothing's happening. We're not subtracting. It's just adding here. You do not need to answer in the form of a question. And the only other change from the regular show that we have here is that if you get your question right, you will get to pick the category for the person that goes after you. So instead of in Jeopardy, you get to pick the next question that comes up for everybody. This is how we simulate that advantage in our turn-based version of the game show. We'll go back and forth like this until we run out of questions or run out of time. At which point we will go into our final Jeopardy question. I'm going to give you the category and you're going to write write down a wager anywhere between zero and the total amount of money that you have earned up to that point. If you get that last question right, you're going to add that money to your bank, get it wrong, we're subtracting it, and whoever has the most money at the end of that question is our Jeopardy champion. You guys ready? Yes, sir. Real quick, Mike, do we have mustaches for the exact same reason? Uh, Was yours for the IBT special? (laughs) No. That's why mine is here. Okay. I tend to get called in to read for guys like this, so I figure I better. (laughs) Oh, nice. Because this is either – this is either – criminal like low low rent criminal or law enforcement it can do both so i like to have it on just to in general and i think it's the versatile, goatee, it's verse it's a versatility thing for sure a versatile and professional mustache joey yours is just to yours is just a mustache no he's, <laughs> he's got, got the IT thing he's got a thing he's got a legit <laughs> my, mine is is that ice cream truck really an ice cream truck <laughs> <laughs> That's my mustache. <laughs> also, uh, Scott Fish was in here saying it was about me, Simon. Sarcasm. I'm terrible at it. I wasn't going to say it, but glad you did. <laughs> Since I'm team Reddit, respond when I have time. Forget that I read it. Yeah, that I feel is, like uh, anyone that texts Scott understands that like he's a busy man. It'll He'll get to us when he does, and he always gets back to us. Absolutely. Also, Scott Fish in here said, and Mikey only eats cereal, showing my age. Mm-hmm. I love that life. Hey, Mikey, he I, likes it, or he likes it. Hey, Mikey, that was so we that got, you're way back. Yeah, that one went over my head. I really have no clue what we're talking about right now. It was a commercial. I, I got it. You got it. All right, good. I got it. I did not. Like, right over my head. We got Hal in here though with the wahoo. That, yours was way better, Joey. That was incredible. Wahoo. What's up, Hal? Welcome in, my friend. Glad to have you here. <laughs> I'm going to run through these categories and then we're going to get started in today's Let's game. Go. Our categories are, who am I? I'm going to show you mm-hmm. a picture past or present. Well, I guess all pictures are from the past, but very past or very recent past. 
Um, you tell me who it is. They're going to be NFL related. Um, all of them okay. are NFL related. I've got, I was told there would be no math. <sighs> It's a math category. I'm going to ask you to do a math equation, but it may not be with just numbers. I may ask you something where you have to determine what the number is. Um, so it's going to call on recall a little bit, and then you have to do a little bit of math at the end. We've got grab bag, anything. There could literally be anything in that category. Never tell me the odds. This is going to be a category where I give you the betting category. I give you two players and or teams and their odds then I give you a third player and or team that I want you to tell me the odds for in that category. So it could be like Super Bowl champions for next season. I would give you the odds for the Ravens and the Texans. And I would ask you within a certain amount okay. what the odds are for the Colts. I was going to say, like what's that. our grace there? Okay, nice. Um, it may change based on the prompt, based on the category, but I will always tell you what the threshold is. Sounds and then good. our last category is Mike was here. This is going to be all about properties that our friend Michael Stoyanov has appeared in. So this category, um, some of the questions may be directly pulled from there. Mike, maybe you have an advantage on some of them, but some of them, I am not sure being in the property even gives you an advantage on that question. <laughs> but we will see how it plays out. Mike, you are up first and you've got free reign of the board since you're up. Which category and value would you like to go for? Well, I got to first say that even though I am uh, returning as a champion, I did not wake up feeling dangerous today. So <laughs> we're not sure how this is going to go. I think we'll play it safe uh, and go with Mike was here for 300. And how chicken shit is that, that I won't even go 500 on, on my category? Like, that's how, how much you scared me with your description of it. I'm afraid I don't want to blow it on a Mike was here question. So. <laughs> my my goal is to end. try to get you to not in that category at all today. <laughs> <laughs> Well, here is your first question. What Tarantino film fills in the blank in the following dialogue from Mike's character, Terry Burke, in the show Billions? T do you want to do your lines or do you want me to do it? What Tarantino film? You, I want you to do it for sure. <laughs> Terry, we're going to be here all effing night if we don't get caught. Johnny, we're not going to get caught. Terry, well, you sound pretty sure for someone wearing bright effing yellow like you're in blank. Johnny, I'm in camo, bro. In this lot, I'm effing invisible. What Tarantino film fills in the blank in that line of dialogue from the show Billions? God, how do I not know this? This is embarrassing. I always thought that was a reference to uh, the bottle rocket. What? Oh, uh, shit. I don't. How much time do I have? You want to you wanna take a stab at it? Yeah, let's go with Pulp Fiction. Final answer? Yeah. It is Kill Bill, bright and yellow. Like volume one is my Bill. favorite. Oh my, it's my favorite. <laughs> volume one is my favorite. Yeah, it's you know, one. I'm really embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. Yeah. Here's what happens. You get on. It's a category made for you. The lights are on. You're sitting there. You're feeling the pressure. And now all of a sudden, every Tarantino film leaves your mind. Exactly. The red light went on on the camera and I froze up. That's really, <laughs> it's really bad. Really bad stuff. Joey, I thought I'd get you by hiding the movie question in a different category this time. <laughs> Joey always tries to hunt out my movie question. It is gone. Some of the chat getting this one. Ladarius, Vaporware, and Dustin. I guess picking up on the yellow in there. Nice job, my friends. Damn it. Can I can I give a movie recommendation since I won't yes. get in trouble? For anyone that liked the first Kill Bill, check out Lady Snowblood. It's oh, interesting. You love it. Yep. I oh, thought okay. you were going to say try out the second Kill Bill. <laughs> no, that'd be a good joke. Let's try it again. Let's get a clip. <laughs> hey, for anyone that liked the first Kill Bill, I've got a movie recommendation for you. Kill Bill 2. Thank you, no, Joey. It didn't feel I right. Didn't feel right. All right. Well, Joey, you've got free reign of the board now. Where do you want to go for your question? Um, I want to do Who Am I for 300. Who Am I for 300? Wait, 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 one second. This is a player from past or present, right? Yes. These are, yeah. Whenever I said past, I meant some of the pictures might be childhood yeah. photos. Okay. Um, I'm looking for the kid in blue. Who is that? This is a player from the past. Actually, the present player. <laughs> but no, I need you to tell me the name of the player. Sorry. Who am I? Oh. I? I just need the name of a player. The one with the blue 10 jersey on? Yes. Who is it's that? Daniel Jones, isn't it? Final answer? Yep. That is Daniel Jones. Joey, that's going to have 300 to your score. What gave it away there? Um, His eyes. It just <laughs> looks like him. Yeah. And <laughs> and he's he's kind of got, got a right, baby face. So the right colors on. I yeah. was shocked is that, a that giant he had the jersey? same he had the same vacant expression as oh, an yeah. adult and a child. Like he's just been that way since birth, I guess. I want to see a baby picture now. 
<laughs> like, did he come out looking like Eli Manning, or did that just like slowly develop the older he got? Is that Philip Rivers to the right of him? They're all Philip Rivers, actually. I was gonna say, yeah, one of the they're all Philip Rivers, Rivers kids. <laughs> all right, well, Joe, you got that one right, which means you're all gonna right. get to pick Mike's next category. Where do you want to send him? I'm gonna send my good friend Mike because he told me I could say that. Um, to <laughs> I was told there would be no math. Okay, Mike. Which point value would you like? And I was told there would be no math. Uh, what? What's how? What's the description of this again? It's just going to be math, math problems, but it may not be the number. Like instead of five plus five, it may be like the number of golden rings gifted on the fifth day of Christmas plus okay. something like that. Let's go with for three hundred. Three hundred, and I was told there would be no math. I need T. Higgins' jersey number plus AJ Brown's jersey number. That what? is 85 plus 11 so that is going to be 96 final answer yes sir T. higgins just oh, wait, changed his jersey let's number. give it to him the last game he played in he wore i was just thinking as i finaled it i was like you know what i did not i did not give clarify. it to him. I, I did not clarify and he's yet to play a game in his new jersey number and i did not specify in there you clearly knew the numbers you're going to get the points for that one mike yeah. <laughs> she hated it Whew, I feel like yeah. I just I just whinged my way to that 300, but I do appreciate you guys uh, uh, giving me the points on that one. Oh, Even I don't get again. pity points on this show. <laughs> Scampers in here got 16. Ladarius was right in line with you with 96. And um, Dustin in the chat said, that's bull crap, Simon. Give him that oh, one. Jay said, yes, that's yeah. crap. Scott said, but I think he should get credit. Yeah. Victor said, justice <laughs> for Mike. <laughs> I'm going to say full disclosure, I'm wow. not a thousand percent that I would have gotten. I knew it was a single digit that he switched to. So if, if I had been pressed or if it had said uh, T. Higgins, New Jersey number, like I might have missed that one. But so Six thanks. Thanks for the love in the chat. And uh, let's yeah, let's keep going. And Mike, you get to pick Joey's next category by getting that one right. Which category would you like to send him to? Well, I listened as as carefully uh, and attentively as I possibly can and could, and I don't think I really understood "Never Tell Me the Odds." So I think <laughs> we'll send Joey to "Never Tell Me the Odds." Three hundred. That's I'm because I explained one. it poorly. Joey, here yeah. is your question. I think I understood it though because I speak so Simon. We have okay. the AFC Championship winner. The Bills are at plus four fifty. The Browns are at plus sixteen hundred. What I need you to tell me within plus or minus 100 is what are the odds for the New York Jets to be the AFC championship winner? So the category is really, I give you some context within the category. You use that to try to tell me within a range what the odds are. God, I just wish um, I'm just going to say plus a thousand. Final answer. I think it's between these two. Yeah. I am so sorry, Joey. It is plus 850. So it's 750 to 950 would have gotten you within that range. You were so close. I'm not. I 850 was in my head, and I just thought, no, that's too close. And I can say that because no one else can read my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I was a, a little bit surprised to see the to see the Jets so high up on this list. Whenever you look at like Super Bowl betting, they're or, uh, I would have guessed like plus 1400 or something like right around where the Browns are. So yeah, that's, this is good. That's a rough category. Don't send me this for the love yeah, of God. I, I mean, can't this time. I but. might. <laughs> I won't <laughs> this time because I got I have free rain right now, but next time you go yeah. and right, don't. don't I, do I think this is at 850 because they just expect that Aaron Rodgers is going to be coming to New York. And then if you look at the Jets defense, it's not bad at all. Plus they have some of the best offensive weapons in the oh, league yeah, right, they're good. right now. Like, it might just be the quarterback is all they're missing. So I understand the odds here. Man. Yeah. It's just when you look at the teams they're ahead of, like, and you just think the names before you like take that second thought, seeing them with better odds than the chargers, the Ravens, heck, even like the dolphins after or last season. And they're ahead of the Jaguars at plus 14. Are they? For, see, that's kind of, I put money on the Jags. The Bengals only are teams, still ahead of them, right? The only AFC teams yeah. ahead of them are the chiefs, the bills and the Bengals. That's what it. are the Bengals at? Plus four ninety. There's I a, I put money on them at what was it plus eight fifty when we were in Vegas? Think so. That's what I put them on. Yeah. All right, here we go. They're loving the Jets. The chat we had, 
Vaporware in here at plus oh, 900. Oh, nice vaporware. job. And Got check it. out Dave's guess at plus 880 oh, right there. Yes, also, I should clarify oh. that these odds are all from the FanDuel Sportsbook. Uh, so these are all FanDuel Sportsbook odds. I know they will vary slightly from book to book. Dustin and Ladarius, a bit more in line with what both of you guys were thinking. And um, Front Yard Fantasy in the chat, letting everybody know that Simon will be properly disciplined after the show for his actions. <laughs> hmm. <sighs> I'm going to have to shove a book down the back of my pants again. Not eat a lemon again. No. I was about to say, yeah. <laughs> you guys ready for That's probably, that's a, yeah. it's an in show, inside baseball reference. <laughs> I ate Simon had to eat a lemon peel and all, the whole thing, like an apple on wow, apple. Like the Levis bed. style. You, mm. you Levis, that, that lemon. Yeah, I've just seen all the hype he's been getting recently. And I thought maybe if I start eating whole lemons, then uh, people start hyping me up. I don't know if that's helping him. He's kind of like he's the, rapidly becoming sort of the nuke Lelouch, like with the fungusy like flip flops. It's like, dude, wait till you're a star. Like, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I hope I hope it, it works out for him. Honestly, if he becomes a star with fungus on his flip flops, we've got a new icon instead of if he waits till he's gone. Joey, that was your question, right? And you got that I one got incorrect, it wrong. Which means, Mike, you've got free reign of this board. You get to go wherever you want. Where would you like to go? All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, time to sack up here. Let's, I'm gonna go. Mike was here, so I'm not really sacking up that hard, but I am gonna go for 500. <laughs> I need the redemption. I need to know that I know me at least as well as the average passerby. Well, Mike was here for 500. Here's your question In the 2014 parody science fiction film Space Station 76, Mike voices the onboard robotic psychologist, Dr. Bot who has a propensity for prescribing what brand name of the medicine diazepam commonly used to treat anxiety. Is it Valium, marijuana, or Xanax? This is no one but me. I mean, this is such a sleeper film. It came and went. We, we It was at South by Southwest and then just disappeared. Uh, but we did it as a stage show for like two years at the HBO workspace. So I, I said, you know, if you'd like to try some, Valium uh hundreds of times so i'm not i got this one it's valium final answer valium is the correct answer nice job mike adding another 500 to your round bank and just hearing that from what i was reading about it, i haven't seen this movie yet but it sounded like it was developed through improvisational exercises and then created into a full-length film am i am i right there yeah we basically did it we improv scenes jack plotnick and sam pancake and jennifer elise cox who was jan brady in the Brady movies, really funny. All of them are great. Khalil Rocher. And we, yeah, we turned, we had like a long one act play version. And then Jack wrote it into a screenplay a few years later. And then, yeah, we got Patrick Wilson and Liv Tyler and Matt Bomer in the movie. And like, if you have a chance, if you can find it anywhere, it's pretty funny. It's like a dark sort of broad comedy. And it's, it's definitely uh, worth a watch. But yeah, it's, it was a really fun uh, experience for me, for sure. That's awesome. Dave in the chat, the only one to get this one right with Valium. Job, we had some Xanax guesses yes, in there Dave, as well. No. <laughs> and we had JL in here said, oh man, we got to get Mike to come improv with us and Kevin Frank. We've been taking some some lessons in classes with Kevin Frank from Second City. Oh, I love like it. That, that would be fun if uh, we got we to gotta get all together sometime and, and do some of that. Sure. I mean, what city are we all in? Let's yeah, We'll do it in Canton. Perfect. I come this year. So. Oh, you're going to come? I really want to. Yeah, I'm definitely pointing towards towards being there. So, nice. what's your karaoke song of choice? I uh, staying seated and ordering <laughs> another drink. That's a great that, one. that old classic. <laughs> yeah, that's generally the one I go for as well. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Yeah, I definitely am not a karaoke guy. That sounds like a Radiohead song, though, doesn't it? Which one? Stay seated and have another drink. Stay seated and, and order another drink. drink. <laughs> I mean, if there was a video head song with that title, I'll do it. I'll karaoke it for sure. <laughs> let me call let me call him up real quick after the show. <laughs> Mike, you got that one right, which means you get to pick Joey's next category. Where do you want to send him? Well, I'm not gonna be cruel. We're not gonna go to never tell me the odds. We'll give you you can have a grab bag. Okay, three hundred. 300. Also, Scott yeah. Fishing, you're saying, Mike, you definitely need to come to Canton. And Jay also saying you gotta come to the expo. Jay's um, bringing a baby. I'm pointing that Wait, way. Is that a surprise? <laughs> also, Dave in here is saying, I didn't recognize diazepam, and I figured I'd recognize the generic Xanax. I think lorazepam is out of it. So Dave using his knowledge of the prescriptions to get that yeah, one right. That process of elimination. It's set in the 70s. That's a big clue that it was Valium. There we go. All right, Joey, you picked which value here? 300. 
300 and you guys like the 300 so far. Nice. Oostenrijk is the Dutch name for which European country? Switzerland, Austria, or Slovakia? I'm going to go with Austria because they both start with vowels. And that's Final my answer. logic. Yes. And your logic worked out, okay, Joey. That's going to give you another $300, getting you to 600 And we're going to move on before anyone points out how badly I butchered pronouncing Oostenrijk. I think he actually nailed it. It was, uh, if my dad's watching, he's going to jump down my throat for the poor Dutch. <laughs> Do you speak Dutch? Me? German? No, but uh, I think you're right on, you're right circling it. It's Oostenrijk or Oostenrijk or. That sounds much better than what I said in there. The chat Toledo. getting this one, Austria. And Jay said, Austria, let's throw another shrimp on the Bobby. <laughs> um, <laughs> Don't dumb. laugh. Don't laugh at him. Like, Jay quotes oh, Dumb and Dumber no, quality, every day. Quality, every day. Quality dad, dad joke. Also, uh, Vaporware in here saying no clue. Not yeah. even a clue on that one. That is correct by some standards, Vaporware. Yes. So nice job. Joey, you got that one right, which means you're going to get to pick Michael's next category. Where do you want to send him? Who am I? This is where I'm sending him. I know who I am, but I'm sending him <laughs> to the category. Let's, who am I? Let's, let's grab that 400. Right. Who am I for 400? Who am I? Oh, that's uh, Donald. Final answer. <sighs> that is, in fact, Aaron Donald. Mike, nice job, nice. my friend. Oh. Getting you 400. And when I first I saw it, I didn't recognize it. But then as soon as I saw the name, I couldn't not see it. Like there was just something in there. Right. Yeah. 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 I just, yeah, something of that. That's the same. It's the same face. Fun fact, he's Much actually taller. six months old in this photo. <laughs> yeah, like that. that was legitimately funny. That was <laughs> and he's got a five o'clock shadow. Wow. <laughs> that's an actual construction truck. He's in his <laughs> yeah, That's not man. concrete. A large man. <laughs> Scary that's man. That's funny. With the, uh, I do want to ask you guys a little bit about the Rams before we move on. I forget who it was, but there's people talking about the Rams are tanking this year. The Rams are taking. They're trying to get Caleb Williams. And I just don't – I don't see it with, like, with Aaron Donald, Matthew Stafford, and Cooper Cup all still on contract. I, yeah. I don't see a world where they are even in contention for that first overall pick next year. Do you guys have any more doom and gloom for the Rams than I do? Because I seem, like, optimistic that they're going to challenge for a playoff spot in that uh, conference. I don't know if they'll challenge for a playoff spot, but I don't think they're tanking. If they were tanking, they would be unloading Stafford. Like, that's the way I see it. And the fact that they're not doing that, um, I think they could finish with at least six wins. And but I, I don't think I may be you're naive, but I honestly don't think any team starts week one in the NFL tanking. Like I think, like they may at be like end up two and nine at some point and be like, you know what, maybe it's a better idea to sit some of our guys. And but and then there are certain teams like Seattle, Pete Carroll. Like that guy, you couldn't pay him enough money to tank a team. I don't think, but <laughs> I don't think, I don't think the Rams at, at week one are going to come out hoping to lose 15, 16 games. They may get there, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't think so. I'm with you guys. Also, we got Scott fish down here said who had 2023 and our Simon will make a funny joke pool. He hasn't checked the board recently. Whoever it is, congratulations on your victory. I know it's been years and years in the waiting and to everybody who had the years further out, which I know is the vast majority of you, uh, better luck next time. All right. That last question was Mike, you got that one, right? Where do you want to send Joey? Uh, I was told there would be no math. Oh man. See, I'm starting to go down this rabbit hole where I got to go for the big ones. I'm going to go 400, 400. And I was told there would be no math. Joey, I need to know Jamal Williams, 2022 rushing touchdowns minus the number of current WNBA teams. 17 plus minus. 16. Oh, minus. So I'm going to say the number is. I don't want to insult the WNBA. So I think it's 16 teams. So I'm going to say the number is one. The final the answer. One. Yeah. Very close, Joey, but there are 12 WNBA teams well, why aren't currently. there 16 WNBA teams? That's what I want to know. When will that happen? I got to turn <laughs> hey, that around quick, didn't I? Nice turn. Nice save on that. Thank you. Nice turn, Thank Joey. You. you got the rushing touchdowns correct, and yeah. you were in the right multiples of four for the WNBA teams, but yeah. got that one wrong. The answer would have come out to five on that one. Five on mm -hmm. that one. 
Before we move on, I did want to ask you guys about Jamal Williams on his new team. Joey, are you expecting 17 rushing touchdowns again from Jamal Williams? And I'm assuming no. What kind of role do you think he has there? Yeah. In no, I'm not expecting 17. I think 10 to 12 is is possible, especially Still if awesome. Kamara is like is spends uh, suspension time this year. You know, I've heard six games could start the season. Uh, you could see Jamal Williams have, you know, seven touchdowns in the first six games. And then from then on, it's a split. And then he gets three more. Mike, do you I think, can see something like that. But yeah. do you think he has value even when Kamara comes back? Or is this uh, you're drafting him for the first six weeks of the season kind of thing? I think historically they've pulled Kamara off the field a lot, you know, even when healthy. So, I mean, and he's probably the best backup that they've ever had for him. So I think so. And I think Joey nailed it. Those first six games, he's definitely going to have double digit touchdowns this year. I, I would think I would predict. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd say 12 to 14 would be, if he had 14, that would be a really good year. Ooh, that'd be great, man. He's like a talking... zero RB dream. If you can get him this year and like those seven to eight round, that'd be awesome. I'm um, he's a player. One of the players I'm most curious to see where their ADP lands come July, August, because of what he did last year. He's a fan favorite. People freaking love that guy Scores 17 rushing touchdowns, but on a new team, but Alvin Kamara suspended. Like there's so many butts going on in here. Um, too many butts, mm. <laughs> too many butts. Who got that one? Right. My radar is nobody wrong. got that one. Right. <laughs> Cause I didn't know how many WNBA teams there are. <laughs> That's right. Well, Joey, since you got that one wrong, Mike, you've got free reign of the board yet again, you get to choose to go wherever you want in here. All right, uh, let's get nuts. Uh, let's go grab bag 500. Grab bag 500. Here is your I don't question. even know why I just said that. I don't. <laughs> Which of the following is not a real Weird Al Yankovic song? Is it Amish Paradise, Canadian Idiot, My Mumps, Party in the CIA, or Pretty Fly for a Rabbi? Okay, uh, Amish Paradise, Pretty Fly, Pretty Fly for a Rabbi, Canadian, my mumps, I'm pretty sure about. I, I think it's between Canadian Idiot and Party in the CIA. And I'm going to go with Party in the CIA just because it, it just sounds too political for him. I'm sure he has two Twitter accounts too. So he doesn't do this <laughs> just as Weird Al. So I'm going to Party in the CIA, final answer. I think he's final right. Final answer. I am sorry. It is oh, my mumps. Oh, Party in the CIA oh. is a real song. My mumps. I made up today when writing this question. Good job, Simon. Um, Mr. Scamper. Does he have a humps song though? Is not, it just not my mumps, or does he just not have a humps parody song? He has a song called my Lumps, Lumps, I believe, but it is a parody of a different. Song. No, it's Gump. Gump. Gump sat alone on a bench in the park. Yeah. A parody oh, of Lump, right? A parody of Lump, yeah. Yeah. So he's got a parody of Lump, but not of my house, right. if I remember correctly. Scampers and Ladarius were agreeing with oh. you on this one. So the chat thought it was CIA yeah, yeah. as well. I got greedy. I went for the 500. I thought I was a, a you know, a Ken Jennings. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not Ken Jennings, guys. Sorry to, <laughs> sorry to let everyone down. <laughs> at least not fully 100% intimately familiar with the full discography of Weird Al Yankovic. That's the yeah. one thing we can draw from that. Dave sure. and you said grab bag 500 is literally my number one option. Does Do the two of you have a favorite Weird Al song? I know I have one. Mm, I don't know. I feel like there's multiple answers. I feel like there's the first one that I was introduced yeah. to. Like the one where like, I feel like my Weird Al fandom is credited to White and Nerdy. Like okay. that was kind of like the one that blew up in like school whenever I was growing up and learned all the words too. So I'm probably going to go with that one just nostalgia wise. Mike, you got one? I mean, no, but I guess I did. I like, I think I like Amish paradise and uh, okay. I guess you'd have to go with I'm, I'm fat. Is it fat? I'm fat. Yeah. I'm fat. I'm fat. You know it just because the base song, the source material is so good in that one. Yeah. Mine is you don't love me anymore. Do you guys know that one? No, I do not know that one. <laughs> What is it? A Anyone in the of? chat knows it's, I don't even know if it's a parody of one. It might be like an original, but um, okay. it's about all these horrible things that his girlfriend has done to him. And he's like, but you don't love me anymore. It's like, you've slammed my face on the barbecue girl. There's all these terrible things she does to him. And I don't know, as a kid, I would just laugh my butt off and it still holds up. <laughs> we got Jay on here with my lovely matey mumps. Check them out. 
Well, guys, with that, we are moving on to our next question. Joey, you've got free reign of the board and an opportunity to come back a little bit. You can't fully close the gap here. Mike was here for 400. Let's go. Uh, taking it See away. how I know our, our guest. Mike was here 400. Before we move on, Jay in here said, Eat It is his favorite Weird Al song. And Scamper said, Word Crimes is my favorite, a parody of Blurred Lines. Oh, okay, Scampers. Not bad. Okay. Mike was here for 400, Joey. Mike played Anthony Russo in the American sitcom Blossom. What novel served as inspiration for show creator Don Rayo and his reference in the series finale when Blossom describes herself as a teenage Holden Caulfield? Is it Catcher in the Rye, To Kill a Mockingbird, or Of Mice and Men? So I know To Kill a Mockingbird I feel pretty well, and I don't remember a character named Holden Caulfield. Scout is the little girl in To Kill a Mockingbird. Of Mice and Men, I read it once. I liked it. I saw the movie. So I'm going to go with Catcher in the Rye. Final answer? Yeah. That is correct, Joey. And the character is actually male in the book. And from what I read, Blossom was originally pitched with a male protagonist and was later switched to the female protagonist uh, that we now know as Blossom. But that's going to give you... Because The Wonder Years was a concurrent, a contemporary show and was sort of basically doing that with a male. That might have been Don always said that the show was any sort of Wonder Years plot could work for Blossom. So, uh, hmm. yeah, I, I had also heard that it was originally male. That's interesting. That, that is an interesting point that, like, maybe it's, uh, like, there was a male coming-of-age show that was very popular at the time. So let's switch tracks, go with the female coming-of-age show in that one. Joey, nice job. Thank you. You got those points. You kept Michael out of it, and you got some points out of it as well. Which category do you want to send Mike to now? I'm going to send him right back to Mike was here. Oh, you're limiting my, uh, well, 200. I am, I am. Look at this crafty devil over here. You got a lead on me. I got oh, yeah. to. Very Ken Jennings-like move. Also, shout out to Dame and Dustin for getting that one right. Nice Cath- job. Cath- the catheter in the ride. The catheter in the ride. It's a different book altogether. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Weird Al version. It really um, takes he- it out of you. <laughs> weird oh, Al relaunches yeah. his career as a novelist. Oh, Joey. <laughs> what? <laughs> It took me a minute. It's an audio. That's that's good. That's solid. Here is your next question. In season five, episode 15 of Reno 911, Ryan Stiles tries to purchase what illicit substance from Mike in an undercover sting? Is it bootleg DVDs, meth, or tiger cubs? This was like a one-day blurry-eyed, like... (laughs) When you audition for this show, you improvise. You improvise up a character, and then they called me in, which is great, of course, but then to do something totally different that I have just the vaguest memory of. But, God damn, I think, man, it better be meth. I'm not, that's not my final answer. I, I, I think it's meth because it's not, the joke was not, the, the reveal wasn't the, 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 the illegal stuff I'm selling, it was something else. So they would, would have been serious. Yeah, it's it's meth, final answer. It is meth, final answer. Nice job, Mike. You remember what Ryan Stiles was trying yeah. to buy. And I watched that episode today and was freaking <laughs> dying at the end there. You're right, the reveal is something else. I don't necessarily want to give it away. But everyone, if you've got Paramount Plus, go and watch this episode today because that, uh, that cool would be deal. hilarious. I feel like if it was Tiger Cubs, you would have remembered it because he probably would have got to play with a Tiger Cub. And how can you ever forget that, that would have been awesome. with a Tiger? That's a good point. So like, now I'm like, no, it's probably not that. So yeah, good job. Also, your own stuff. it's like meth is a good like base, like a go to answer for my career because I've sold it <laughs> or done it like in like at fully 10 roles have involved <laughs> meth in some way or another. So it's a good go to if you're if that's one of the, the options. On uh, Mike Stoinoff's career, guess meth. I want to know who the equivalent is for bootleg DVDs. Like, who has really just been typecast into bootleg DVD roles over and over and over again? <laughs> David here said, please be meth. And then Scamper saying, it better be meth is a tremendous aspiration. <laughs> <laughs> Also, uh, Jay That's said uh, Mike needs to use that as a team name this year. Yeah, it better be Matt. Matt <laughs> <be> <laughs> is usually the answer. We'll we'll toy with it. I like it. 
Well, nice job, Mike. Going to get 200 points for that one, extending your lead over Joey, and you get to pick Joey's next category. Uh, Where do you want to send him? <laughs> Again, I was nice once before, but now we're competitors. And it's right. getting serious. You got to go back to never tell me the odds, boss. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to send me to the low value one. Um, Let's see. Okay. Getting that last Whoa, one. Oh, I'm right. stupid. Wait. Uh, no, I'll let you do it if you want to send me there. That's fine. No, no, no. Let's, let's, uh, this will give you, uh, I like the idea of giving you a shot here. If you can get one of these high ones, I'll be impressed. I'm going to take it for 200, though. I have 200. Idea. Yeah. Here we go. The AFC South winner next season, the Jacksonville Jaguars are at minus 150. The Texans are at plus 850. What are the odds for the Indianapolis Colts within a hundred? Plus one thousand. I think they have worse odds than the Texans. Final answer? Yeah. I am sorry, Joey. They're sitting at plus five hundred. Better odds than the really? Texans to win that division. Maybe it's maybe it's that Jonathan moved. Taylor. What do you think it is? I don't know because it moved because it was. I remember we were doing a show earlier in the year. It was Jacksonville, Tennessee, and then the Texans, and the Colts were last. Wow. I think Gardner Minshew has completely sharped Indianapolis up on its head. Change those know. odds over there. Dave in the <laughs> chat getting this one at plus 600. Vaporware as well. Very close. And uh -oh. Jay, just outside of the range. So you are wrong and close, which is the kind of wrong that hurts the most. It is God. The most painful wrong. Guys. Jay, that just hurts so bad. You idiot. I think Mike has found my kryptonite in this, this category. <laughs> yeah. Category. I was excited about this category. I love going to the FanDuel Sportsbook. Oh, Funny man. thing is, I still feel like you're excited about this category. Even I still am. I want to do it again. You're like, send me back. I can do it, coach. <laughs> Woo! Well, Joey, after getting that one wrong, unfortunately, that means you do not get to pick Mike's next category. Nope. And Mike, fortunately for you, you've got free reign of the board. Where would you like to go? You got the lead as well. I mean, getting one of those 500s is tempting, but I'm just too, too chicken shit. <laughs> ask anyone who knows me. This is right in line with my personality. So I'm going to I'm gonna try grab bag again for 400. Okay, grab bag for 400. Here's what we got. What is the name of the character shared with a 2016 presidential nominee from the TV show Big Mouth pictured below? Is this character named Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, or Jeb Bush? I mean, isn't that a woman? Isn't that a female? I mean... This is really, really annoying. I mean, yeah. I should guess Hillary Clinton just because that looks like a girl to me. I don't know the show. This is just a guess. And I, I'm just going to go with Hillary Clinton, final answer. I'm sorry. It is oh. Bernadette Bernie oh. Sanders. She goes oh. by Bernie Sanders in the show, oh. but her full name is Bernadette. Oh. You did correctly identify it, but that was the trick in the 400 for sure. Oh, my God. That was that was brutal like a that, punch that was a brutal question that was my the chat did not know this one but for some reason they thought that character looked like a jeb bush. i would have said jeb bush yeah, <laughs> something about that character gone. said clap please yeah um, um somewhere in there well dang. it was a tough one but joey you got free reign of the board now where do you want to go so when i first met my wife she said you like trouble would not agree to go on a date with me for the very very long time but i kept trying and i kept persisting and eventually she went on a date with me 400, never tell me the odds. Let's go. <laughs> the 2023 NFL draft number two overall pick. Will Anderson is at plus 200. Will Levis is at plus 250. What are the odds for CJ Stroud within 100? The number two, right? Number two, number two. overall pick. I'm going to say plus 175. Final answer? Yes. Joey, you were right in that range. You saw through the trick. It's exactly the same yeah. as Will okay. Levis to be the Got number it. two overall pick. To me. Really? The same as Levis? Uh. The same exact as Levis now is CJ Stroud uh, at plus 250. Uh, and the new favorite is Will Anderson, Will the defensive Anderson, player yeah. to the Texans at number two overall. Um, Mike, I heard your shocked reaction. Is this surprising you to see Levis and Stroud now viewed similarly odds-wise to that pick? Yeah, I don't I I don't know what the Texans are doing honestly if they don't take a quarterback of Stroud's caliber like if he's there like that just doesn't compute to me considering their needs their deep and abiding needs like uh, I mean Anderson's a great player but Stroud is 
I think one and two, Young and Stroud, is closer than three and four, Levis and Richardson in terms of ability and like potential. So I don't know why you don't take Stroud there, but yeah, I'm. I'm I thought it was going to be like I would have guessed like minus one hundred on this. I would have thought he was a straight up favorite to be the two, but I'm I've, with you. I was shocked I've, when I pulled this open today. I wonder what the odds are that they get both Will Anderson and Will Levis. Because the Texans pick well, ninth in the draft as well, don't they? No, 12th. Is it 12th? Mm. Though yeah. they are saying, Jay down here saying new reports are saying Stroud could drop to the late teens. So this may be them like really saying what is they- happening behind the scenes. Is that guy blowing interviews or like how do you, how does that even? I'm just excited that-, that this year, the draft, last year, it felt all manufactured and ended up being all manufactured. We had Kenny Pickett yeah. in the first Malik Willis didn't go to the third. There was no real drama. There's some real smoke screens going on this year with what teams are doing yeah. with these quarterbacks. Like the amount of conflicting reports, players dropping, rising rapidly. I can't wait till, uh, I can't wait till draft day. It's going to be exciting Great. this year. Definitely. All yeah. right. Well, Joey, that okay. ties it up after right. that one. And you get to pick Uh-oh. Mike's next category. Where are you going to send them? Who am I? Who am I? Mike, do you want one, two, or five in the who am I category? 500. 500. Here we go. Who am I? AJ Brown. Final answer? Yeah. Sorry, that is DK (gasps) Metcalf dressed as Superman. DK Metcalf dressed as Superman. Unfortunately, no points on that one, but Joey, that means we're back to you. Where do you want to go? Vaporware in the chat agreeing with you. Thought it was AJ Brown as well, so you're not alone on that one. Never tell me the odds for 500. Okay. <laughs> now Never tell me the odds. Joey, Super Bowl 58 outright <laughs> betting. The Dolphins are at plus 2,100. The Falcons are at plus 6,000. What are the odds for the Raiders to win Super Bowl 58 within 250? Oh, man. All right. I I think the Raiders' chances are better than the Falcons. Definitely not as good as the Dolphins. I'm going to go 4-2-5-0. Final answer? Yeah. Yep. I'm sorry, it's oh! plus 5,500. Very close to the Falcons up there. All right. They're not viewing them as much better than the Falcons going into not next much. season. No. But that's going to leave this game tied after that one. Also, I need to give a big shout out to Jay who shout came out. in here. And he said, whoever put that category together did a great job. The Who Am I category today was put together by our friend Jay. Jay, let me tell you, I have yes. pooped the bed in that category today. However, I have loved it and I would love to see it back on this. Category. Oh, no, he did the Who Am I category. Oh, well, that's a horrible category. (laughs) (laughs) I just wanted to clear that up. The great category was me. Sorry. I I was trying to compliment him, too. I know, but I can't let you give credit to Joey. Who am I? It's a a great category. (laughs) All right. Well, Joey, that was incorrect, unfortunately. But, Mike, you've got free reign on this board. Where do you want to go? I mean, I think just the 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 strategist in me says you got to get rid of that last 500. I don't love it, but I've got to because then it's it's either it's nip and tuck. No one can get too far ahead of anyone else. Were you so, on Nip Tuck by chance? No? Okay. <laughs> I never did. I, I actually have a story about that. I had a Tell phenomenal us. audition for that one. It's a, of course, every actor is like, oh, I had a great, I should have. Uh, <laughs> we'll, talk, we'll talk at some point, maybe post-show. Right. Let's go with I was told there would be no math for 500. I was told there would be no math for 500. Complete the following math problem. The number of times Patrick Mahomes has won league MVP times the total number of points scored in Super Bowl 57. So that is last year's Super Bowl. So we got a little multiplication here. The number of times Mahomes has been the league MVP times the total number of points scored in last year's Super Bowl. Uh, I think, well, I know that it's, it's 73. I think it's once. Oh man, it's it's this answer is either 74 or 75. And I am gonna go with remember that it is multiplication and not addition here. So you'll be multiplying the two numbers. Oh dude, thank you. Um 
I don't want people to mess up just the math operation. If you get the numbers right, then uh, then it can. Yeah, so we got seventy three. That changes. I am gonna now go with two. One hundred and forty six. Final answer. Yeah. That is absolutely correct. Ooh. 73 points, a score of 38 to 35 in the last Super Bowl. Two league MVPs leading to 146 is the answer. I'm surprised the ease with which you Honestly, remember the exact like, score of the Super Bowl. I, I feel like I whinged an answer out of you guys, and now I got like the, the reminder. Like, oh, I did the same thing for Joey when he did. I got one. I, Joey I did that. uh Joey did plus instead of minus, and I corrected the minus. If you would have done the math wrong, I would have not corrected you. Yeah. Uh, but if you just missed the operation, this isn't the right. ideal well, situation I, to list math problems. I do certainly appreciate it. And I'm going to share all prizes uh, and prize money with Joey today after the show. We're going to Kohl's, buddy. It's I was gonna say, all we the, have is Kohl's cash. The problem is we don't, let Joey, we don't let Joey out after the show. So um, <laughs> you're going to have to maybe phone him in or something. Oh, but I'll you're break phone, him out. We'll go, he's on phone restriction as well. So oh, man. you can write him a letter. The chat getting this one. Vaporware and Ladarius knew that. Nice Good job, job, guys. And Victor in here said, I was doing the Rams versus Bengals Super Bowl. Was on the wrong one. That's all right. Uh, for his answer. Well, you got that one right, Mike, which means you get to send Joey to his next category. Where do you want to send him? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll stay with I was told there would be no math. One or two, Joey? 200. 200. Complete the following math problem. Austin Eckler's PPR running back finishing rank plus TJ Hawkinson's PPR tight end finishing rank. So this is like if they finished as the number 12 PPR running back, you would do 12 plus. Five. Final answer. Mm -hmm. I am sad to announce that that is incorrect, Joey. Austin Eckler was the number one overall PPR running back, and TJ Hawkinson was the number two PPR tight end at the end of the season. Wow. TJ well, Hawkins is my guy, and I didn't know that. I can double check this. I'm going to confirm right no, now. No, you're right. I, I would believe you over me. Believe me. Yeah, I number two. Um, number three was Good George Kittle, and number four was Mark Andrews. Victor in the chat getting this one. Vaporware getting that one as well. Nice job, my friends. I thought getting for sure he was right. number, finished his fourth. That's okay. That's how hey, I'm gonna... You got that one wrong, but it was even better news for one of your favorite fantasy players. Oh, love him. So at least you got to be wrong, underestimating yeah. TJ Hawkinson. Mike, we're back to you. And I think we got time for one more round before we go into final Jeopardy. You got free reign of the board. Which question would you like? This is the last question before we go to final? Yeah, we'll do. Each of you takes one more and then we'll move into our final Jeopardy question. Oh, okay. Uh, well, since it's going to come down to... I'll, I'll finish out Mike was here for 100. Mike was here for 100. Mike appeared in the 2008 film The Dark Knight as Dopey. Dopey was an accomplice to which antagonist of the film pictured below? That is clearly Two-Face. Uh, no, uh, my <laughs> actual and final answer is that is Heath Ledger's legendary portrayal of the Joker. That is Heath Ledger's legendary portrayal of the Joker. $100 question. Going to add another 100 points to your bank, bringing you up to a clean 2,000. Before we head into that final question for Joey, Vaporware getting this one right and Ladarius getting that one right as well. Joey, which yep. question would you like pick. after Michael determines your category? Yeah. Oh, uh, can I can I let him go where he wants? Give him a, a freebie? You can. Sure. sure. Right, I'll, I'll, yeah, you go where you want, Joe. Um, grab bag 200. Grab bag 200. What is the product pictured below advertised as? A finger trap? A garlic no. peeler or a reusable cannoli shell? <laughs> okay. I don't think that's a finger trap. Shout out Coop. Um, I was with Coop when he got the finger trap, by the way, everyone. Um, it, Do you want me to zoom in I'm on gonna the photo say, again? Yeah. I understand why it's a reusable cannoli thing, but how is a – oh, but you make the cannoli. Oh, fine, cannoli. Final answer? But why is it ridged? That might be a peeler of some sort. I'm going to go garlic peeler. Final answer. Yeah, I hate this question. <laughs> oh, it is a garlic <laughs> peeler. You landed on the right one. You put the clove of garlic in there and you roll it around like that and it comes out nice and peeled. Um, or you That was the most stressed an, out I've been. You can just use day. an effing knife. You don't need to buy these. It's a waste of plastic that's going to end up in our oceans. Just, just use a knife. 
Did you put that question here just to deliver that message? Yeah, I got really annoyed that yeah. someone had one of these the other day. Yeah. And I will say it was very useful, but I did not like it. Awesome. Um, but you can find these on Amazon, three pack for $12.99, not a sponsor. <sighs> Joey, that is going to add 200. And we are going to move on to our final Jeopardy question now. Your category okay. for final Jeopardy is going to be NFL sponsors or NFL team sponsors. Jeez. So that is okay. your category. Mike, you have up to 2,000 that you can wager. Joey, you have up to 1,600. Write down your wagers on your phone, a piece of paper, your forehead, uh, with whatever writing utensil you have. And then in about 10 seconds, we will reveal what we got there. Let me know when you guys have your wagers ready. Where's the pen? There it is. You got your pen. While we're waiting for you guys to get your wagers down, I do want to remind everybody that tonight here on Better Sports Network, we've got Better Sports Live with Lisa Ann and Rick Hamill at 7 p.m. Eastern time. They're going to be talking NBA playoffs, the NFL, baseball, your fantasy teams, bets, and more. That's right here on BSN with Better Sports Live with Lisa Ann and Rick Hamlet at 7 p.m. Eastern time. You can check it out at bettersports.com, the Better Sports Network app, or streaming everywhere, BSN. Let's check it out. You guys got your uh, wagers ready to go? Yep. Yeah. I okay. never understand how to do the math part on this. I just put a number down. Go ahead and reveal your wagers if you'd be so kind. It says 401, but my light is not allowing that. Okay, Joey wagered 401. Why is it not? 1201 for me. And Mike wagered 1201. Well, I'm going to reveal the question to you guys here shortly. You're going to have about 30 down. seconds to write down your answer. If you get okay. it right, you're going to add all of that money to your score. If you get it wrong, we are going to subtract it. So I'm going to do a little bit of math in the meantime. Here is your final Jeopardy question. Which NFL team announced Skyline Chili as their new official chili partner? Is it A, the Cincinnati Bengals? B, the Tennessee Titans, or C, the Kansas City Chiefs? Let me know when you guys have your answers. I have my answer. Yeah. You guys have your answers? Yeah. Okay, the chat's got their answers in there as well. Go ahead and reveal your answers, guys. It says Bengals. Joey Bengals. says Bengals. Mike also says Bengals in the chat. Is all over Bengals as well. We've got Cincy Avi. We've got Grossinati from Tim down there. Well, the <laughs> correct answer to this question is the Cincinnati Bengals. Both of you are correct, which means Mike, you are going to be a champion today here on Fantasy Football. Wow. Thank you so much, my friend, for taking job, the time buddy. to come on with us. Thank you. I had a great time. And uh, where, where do I get the money? Where do I pick up this check? Oh, just turn on your fax machine and we're fax going machine. to fax you some Kohl's cash uh, at the end of the show. Me. All right. That sounds mm -hmm. great. And I'm, I'm, uh, I was thrilled to have come and play, as always. And uh, I had a great time. Well, Good I will say you guys. can choose. I don't want to pigeonhole you. You can choose to be faxed Kohl's cash or we can pay you out in our own custom uh, cryptocurrency Grimace coin. Um, so... <laughs> Your well, I don't, I, I don't, I'll have to go back to 1997 to find my fax machine. So I think, yeah, let's go with the Grimace coin. Okay. Well, the Grimace coin will be on the way shortly. I think Jay handles all of those transactions. Victor uh -huh. in the chat with the bears for the win. Congrats, Mike. Congrats again, guys. That is going to be it for us today. I want to give another huge thank to our guest, Michael Stoyanoff for coming and hanging out with us today. If you are not currently following him on Twitter, go ahead and fix that. You can find him on Twitter at Mike Stoyanov. Follow him for movie takes, fantasy football takes, and to keep up with what he's up to over there. Until tomorrow, though, we are out of here, everybody. Thank you so much for taking the time to come in and hang out with right, us. Thank you. We'll see you at 3 p.m., everybody. Another big thanks to Mike. A big thanks to everybody in the chat. And enjoy the rest of your Wednesday evening. Adios, everyone. <laughs>